कर्तुरज्ञय प्राप्यते फल कर्म किं पर कर्म तड़ कृतिमहोदो पतन कारण फल शाश्वत गति निरोधक ईश्वरापित नेच्छयाकृत चिशोधक मुक्ति साधक काय बांगमना कार्यमुत्तम पूजन जप चिंत क्रम जगत ईषधी युक्त सेवन अष्टमूर्तिवृत्पूजन उत्तमस्तवा उच्चमंदत चित्त जप ध्यान उत्तम आज्यधारया स्रोतशासम सरलचित बीरलता परम भेद भावना सोहमस भावना भीदा पावनी मता भेद भावना सोहमसौ भावना भीदा पावनी मता पावनी मता सो लास्ट थ्री डेज rather three classes we have been talking on japa in details hope something is entering in your mind <laughs> and it should work or else you can say swami ji you keep talking we keep taking notes everything is perfect but don't worry everything is in one box okay but i remember i cannot forget <laughs> So you know, sometimes when I talk like this, so I remember one person told Swami Ji, "Don't worry. Whatever you are talking, everything is stored in my subconscious mind. <laughs> so no problem. If not today, not if, if, if even if not in this life, next life it will come up. Okay, it will be useful. So I am assuring you, if not today, tomorrow, tomorrow is next life. Okay, if not in this life, definitely next life." it will come to the forefront so don't worry so hopefully you are not putting everything in your pandora box so which box you need not open maybe you can leave behind who knows maybe it will pop up in your next life but please understand the teaching does not talk much about next life it talks in this life so what is to be done do it now because as you know the story this uh, one day one i think i have talked in many occasions still i am trying to say this in one like this uh, there was a sadhu who was doing meditation penance tapas for long long time and now god only know, god only knows how many lives also he has been practicing so he came across narada and remember narada is a great okay <clears throat> so the first journalist diplomat politician anything you say everything put together is called narada okay <laughs> so in india we have saying oh oh are you a narada narada means the one who loves to create some issues of course to create issues to solve for betterment but he never creates issues uh, to destroy somebody but it appears as though he is destroying but always end result is excellent because after all he is a saint and he is called devarshi sages of seer of devatas So anyway, so always he keeps traveling because he cannot. He is a restless fellow. Okay, you can say he is Mister Restless. Okay, so always he keeps traveling. In fact, that is supposed to be this Pari Braja Pari Braja Kacharya is this exactly called Narada. Because wherever a Swami uh, stays a longer time, starts stinking. This is the truth. If any Swami stays in one place longer time, will start stinking because. with the reference to the place with the reference to people with the reference to many things you will have slowly some soft corner if not attachment definitely there will be some soft corner there is no doubt in it which again will lead to many complications however coming back here so this narada appeared <laughs> so when narada appeared of course this great uh, sadhaka 
so prostrated him and said look <coughs> you are traveling all the time so when you next time meet vishnu lord vishnu will you please find out when am i going to be liberated is this life especially i am very clear is this life will be my last life because i am tired please now i said okay fine i'll find it out and of course nearby <coughs> some one young mischievous boy was playing sort of discovered hey, this is narada funny man is there so let me go and meet and of course he came and did namaskar okay okay so he heard also who had all the discussion he said look if you are going to find out for him also will you please find out for me also because he did not know what question to ask okay <laughs> will you please find out now what when i will be liberated in this life or which life how in lives okay and of course this great sikha great sadhaka started laughing at what nonsense you are you are so mischievous you do not know anything you have not done anything how can you say that you will be liberated and you are asking for liberation what nonsense you are just imitating me and of course this young chap did not bother about and of course you know narada goes when comes back again few years now this young chap has grown up but he was hanging around all the time there and of course now when narada comes and this young chap also has grown up he came also to see what is happening because he wants to know his result and of course the sadhak asked what about me he said okay this is your last life i spoke with vishnu vishnu said this is your last life okay so he was very happy and elated appa finally and again remember it is vidhya mukti not jivan mukti okay remember this is a point to be noted okay vidhya mukti <laughs> what we call as karma mukti then this young boy said what about me the young boy who has grown up what about me so narada did not know what to do okay when he had to handle the case because he remember he is devar she is not ordinary person that's why he can enter anywhere and everywhere in fact if he goes to any palace any court the king has to respect him because after all he is a great diplomat great politician great journalist he can do anything and everything okay remember <laughs> so that's why so this young boy, uh, man who has already grown up young boy who has grown up become young man so he asked okay what about me how long will it take and of course narada looked at one tree i said look as many leaves are in this tree okay as many leaves are there in this tree that many lives it will take for you oh he did so and he climbed up the tree and after climb up the tree he started shaking the tree in such a force all the leaves fell down so when all the leaves fell down now he asked oh narada please look at now is there any leaf no then now tell me how many lives will it take definitely this life so it shows that you know jigyasu to most important aspect in life because i am bringing the topic because the horse demands okay by default everybody is a mumukshu without knowing what is moksha this is the very much really painful thing this is the agony everybody is a mumukshu mumukshu means muktum ichu the one who wants to be a free person the one who is a desires of freedom desiring freedom so everybody is mukshu without knowing what is muksha what is liberation that's why you know because you want freedom while driving the car you make sure there is enough of space in front of you suppose if you discover one fellow is going slow and restricting you limiting you what you do somehow you manage to overtake sometimes wrong way to go to the front to make sure there is enough of breathing space you understand <laughs> so that means when you overtake and make sure there is enough of space what does you want there indirectly you want freedom so that means nobody wants to limit one's own self so in every work in every job in every moment knowingly or unknowingly you seek freedom liberation happiness remember what you call as a freedom that is called happiness that is called enlightenment everything at one and same there is no difference but religious people have destroyed us 
they have separated they have differentiated they have created division for their benefit sake because if they say the enlightenment freedom liberation all are one and same then what happens their business will not survive because only you can be liberated if you are unhappy here that is their concept any religious you can be a happy person if you are unhappy here means if you can be permanently happy you understand when you go to heaven you will be permanently happy how you can be permanently happy you have to be unhappy here unless you are unhappy here you cannot be permanently happy there because what you deny here every religion don't worry okay what you deny here in this life everything will be available in heaven for you <laughs> what a crazy idea and everybody subscribes to this enormous nuisance how oh, so purposefully they create this, this division that happiness is different liberation is different freedom is different enlightenment is different like you know the best concept which was being promoted by uh, this britishers divide and rule policy because till now the management also continues with this attitude which is sick attitude okay that's why britishers could not survive now you look at what is the uh, britishers mind now one of the sick mind in the world is called britishers mind if you talk any britishers i am telling you the you the word one of the sick mind of the world is called britishers if you talk any britishers so proud of themselves in that gene that pride is there that's why everything once upon a time it was the educational hub now it is almost collapsing and of course for europe no it was a uh, banking hub that is also gone now the way things are happening god knows what's going to happen however that's not our topic topic is here very clear that we divide and rule policy remember in divide and rule policy presupposes that you are afraid and you have some ulterior motive you are not aware and sure about yourself either and definitely that is not healthy in long run that's why here is very clearly and carefully said that the happiness freedom liberation enlightenment all these words that you see come across all are synonymous it is used contextually so when the religious people use moksha that time this so called spiritual people think as happiness and of course intellectual not thinks as enlightenment religious people again those who are devoted they think you know going to heaven without knowing what is heaven okay that's a big problem that's the most <laughs> dangerous thing everybody every religious devotees wants to go to heaven without knowing what is heaven okay it is like you no know, you want to go to foreign countries you are applying visa you have converted your money everything you have done without knowing what is destination <laughs> but what a painful life imagine Yeah, at least you should have some information, clear information about the destination. Then you say, "We will see." But interestingly, this destination is created. You cannot come back. Okay, so that means you are a branded lover. You can. We will talk about it. bonded, branded lover. Whole life means as long as you are, you are cut. Very unfortunate thing. However, coming back here, so that's why you need to do job. which actually helps you not to get into any loop in your life that the loop which is created by you or by others or in a given situation or surrounding because remember the loop can be created by any means it is very easy convenient once a loop is being created 
mind, if the mind has adopted, not caught, mind never gets caught in the loop. Once mind adopts, there is a big difference, getting caught and adopting. So never ever say mind is caught with a habit. Loop means habit, okay? Never ever say that mind is caught with a habit. Never. Mind has adopted it. Mind is familiar with. Mind has developed some comfort with reference to this. Can you see the difference? Because if you say that mind is caught, that means you are completely helpless. In fact, you want to justify what you are doing it. So it is again intellectual perversion. Intellectual justification. So that's why in order to not to get caught in the loop, that which is being created by you or by others or in a given situation, surroundings, you need to take the help of Japa. In fact, Japa is the unique way to bring you away from loop. That's why inevitably, in every religion, whether it is Hinduism, whether it is Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Jainism, you name it any religion, okay? Japa is common. Why they do, how they do is maybe different. But Japa, they may talk in different way. But the concept of Japam is there in every religion. So, to make sure that one should not get caught in one's own loop. Now, here, when you do Japam, that is what last time we saw, with uninterrupted thinking process. Of course, not thinking of your honey, okay? Remember, okay? <laughs> that also we discussed. <laughs> anyway, don't worry. <coughs> that honey thinking will not continue for last long. Uh, no, will not, no, it will not last long, okay? One day, one month, one year, two years, maybe one decade. Oh, too much, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> this is too much, yeah? <laughs> so, anyway, don't worry. So, this uninterrupted thinking definitely is better than interrupted thinking. In fact, that is called disturbance for you when without your knowledge there is some type of interruption in your thinking. Remember. When you say I am disturbed, what does it mean? I expected, this is called expectation, or I wanted my mind to move in a given way. And it did not happen. It got obstructed. Who I and how let us not get into this big area. So that means it's very clear the interruption of your thinking process is called disturbance for you. Same logic you can extend for others. So when you interrupt others thinking, others thinking process, other person also is being disturbed because of you. So the disturbance is nothing. It is just interruption of thinking process. I hope it is clear for you. So if this is the case, so the purpose of Japam is what? To make sure that you are not creating any interruption for you nor for others. Can you see this point? At any given time, at any given situation, 
with reference to anybody and everybody. Never ever create interruption. But the problem is when you have created interruption for you or there is interruption in your thinking process and you are not aware of it. That time you create interruption for others. Not you create, it happens, okay? <laughs> Without your knowledge, it happens. This is the psychological impact, nothing else. That's why what you need to, that's why always I highlight with you all, try to fit yourself. Please understand, try to fit yourself with reference to any given situation. Never ever become a different person with reference to any situation. That's why even if during class time, whenever I discover anyone is a little different, I openly say because of this reason. Because when you are different, that means there is some type of interruption in you already. Maybe mildly you do not know. And sometimes widely, of course, it is visible to others and including you, but you cannot come out of it either. So that's why make sure that your thinking process, that's why the most important sadhana, we make it called Shravana. Please understand, I am not telling you jokes. If you can listen to the teaching carefully and alertly, let us say this is half an hour, if you listen to me properly and carefully, this is one of the best sadhana to have in life. Because when you start listening to, please understand. And of course, I am looking at you all. It's not like no time pass, not uh, attending the sermons and, or uh, preachings, you understand? Or in India, we have this called kathas. It's not like that. Because I am looking at all of you. I am observing each of your thinking process. Now, if you are able to correlate with the teaching and this teaching ambience. Most important aspect, okay? If you are able to correlate, if your mind is cope, able, you are able to cope up your mind with this teaching and this teaching ambience. That means you know how to handle your mind. You know how to not to give importance, how not to give importance, okay? to your mind so that that mind will create some type of obstacles in your life. Because remember, with the help of the mind, we all function. Today I am talking to you all with the help of my mind. But because I am talking with the help of the mind, that does not mean that mind is everything. I need to draw a line to my mind. How? Being humble to myself. Being humble to the situation. Can you see this point? But the problem with me is when I take the help of the mind and in the process I am able to articulate properly. Let us just take this example. I am able to articulate properly means I am able to talk properly. Now what happens? <laughs> I start taking the credit, then without my knowledge, what happens to me? You know better. So that's why one has to be really humble. That's why we say, Vidya Dadati Vinayam Iti. The knowledge has to bring humility in your life. If there is no humility, that's not, not knowledge. That's in fact called as information. It is a word not only for you, for others too. That's why that's, we say intellectual honesty in one step ahead. If there is no intellectual honesty, definitely mind will not listen to you. Please remember this very carefully, the statement. If there is no intellectual honest, mind will not listen to you. That's why a devotee's mind is much, much better than a so-called intellectual mind. Because with reference to a devotee, makes no difference whatever religion it may be. Because a devotee, please understand, there is something called intellectual honest. 
whether the person knows or not makes no difference. Whereas with reference to the so-called intellectuals, there is no intellectual honesty at all. That's why when you look at the whole life, so the life you are proceeding, please understand this is how I look at people. Instead of making your life simple, you are making your life complicated. Can you see this point? The whole purpose of your work, the whole purpose of your living, the whole purpose of everything that you do is nothing to make your life as simple as possible. But what do you do? What do you do? You live, make your life more and more complicated. You can see for yourself. How was your life in the childhood? Simple. As long as it was simple, it was great. Don't you observe this? Once it has become complicated, what happens? Forget about the thinking process of life. This is a very big thing to understand. Just look at a food habit. The God is great, okay, in this regard. When we were children, whether you were born, up in, born, in, born and brought up in India or uh, Europe or um, America or any part of the world, where well, many different countries are here, so Australia, all these things, wherever you are, makes no difference. Remember, every child has developed or has grown up or has come up with a very simple food. That's why you say, this is child food, okay? You understand? Child food means what? Simple. <laughs> Baby food. Means whenever there is problem, stomach, upset and other things, you love to go back your childhood food. Have you not observed? Whenever there is a complication in the stomach, what do you do? Just observe this point. You love to go back to your childhood food, simple food. Do you do that or not? In fact, it heals much faster than anything. Now, as you grow, because in between, because of the tongue, you need complicated food. Then, as you grow old, what happens again? We say, <laughs> Diabetic food, okay? Now it is called diabetic food. <laughs> diabetic, cholesterol, all put together, okay? It is a simple food. Hey, be proud. Hey, I am a simple food. I am a simple person. Don't say that I am a old person, diabetic person. I am a simple person. I need a simple dieting, okay? So the body grows accordingly. Body knows what to do, what to adapt. But unfortunately, Mind does not add up to this. Can you see this point? The more you grow old, the more your mind becomes complicated. Look at people. That's why you make sure that you are making your mind simple. And how to make mind simple? Because already I consumed my time. I do not know why I got charged today, okay? <laughs> I start th thought of starting but I don't know what happened. I really, <laughs> I don't know. I might have picked up something from somebody, okay? <laughs> I'm sure. Because when I looked at I had planned to this verse. But when I looked at you people, <laughs> it went this way. But doesn't matter. The simplicity will come. When you appreciate oneness. When you don't highlight division. When you don't see the planet. So let us quick look at the verse so that we'll re uh, look the verse tomorrow. Say that Veda Bhavana Soha Mithya So Bhavana Vida Pavani Mata. So if you look at the life, everybody thinks. So when in the Previous verse said un un uninterrupted thinking and interrupted thinking. That means thinking is common. So what do you think? He says you think others are different from you. Something is different from you. Is one type of thinking. Because all the thinking can be divided into two categories. So that he puts it very carefully. So one is called 
duality thinking other one is called non duality thinking so one category is called that other is different from you or rather you are different from other i am exclusive you understand i am special i am smart i am intelligent what does it mean you know better so that means there is difference there is duality so you create a division all your thinking and another thinking is non duality thinking that i am not different nobody is different from that's most important nobody is different from me in fact the one story goes very nicely about guru nanak with this i'm stopping guru nanak because he was from a let us say from a <clears throat> farmer's family so one of the story goes about him so he was asked when he was working so he was asked to measure something some rice or some grains to give somebody so they don't you know in hindi they start counting 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 bara 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 then 13 that's 13 number is a very interesting number 13 in hindi it is called tera means tera also it means also yours yours so what he was doing is he was counting tera 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 so he was not in the 13 number so he has gone to yours yours means oh god it is yours 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 so from 13 he jumped to yours 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 and he did not know what is he doing it in fact other started noticing what nonsense you are doing you know how many times you have put and he started saying, tera 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 so even if it took long time for him to come back to sense to say it is mera 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 means mine 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 you understand <laughs> we say tera mera a whole life is in hindi we have beautiful tera mera tera means yours mera means mine okay <laughs> or tutu me me we have got, we have got lot of words in hindi okay tutu me me <laughs> emembo in fact when we fight we say tutu me me nothing else wherever there is tera and mera your son mind mind their fight will happen so here he says either you say mera or you say tera no problem either you say it is mine or you say it is yours absolutely no problem but conveniently if you say tera mera mera tera you understand conveniently sorry definitely that is not healthy at all more of it we'll say please go join us